uh, uh, e uh, ver very good question. I appreciate it. So what if we wanted to do something more complicated, like plus, you know, uh, unfortunately right now only uh, pluses and minuses, but nevertheless, 5 minus uh, 4, and I'm intentionally entering recognizable inputs uh, plus, uh, you know, something like, uh, uh, like this. Um, Right, so parentheses should be nested. This shouldn't be a, a big problem to interpret parentheses uh, and so forth. Of course, the uh, this is universal. This is uh, a universal rule of basically parenthesizing parts and parentheses themselves should be able to uh, contain parentheses. As you can see, the stuff is going pretty good, right? So what if I, uh, what if I? Um, can I copy and paste over here if I just say copy so that I spare myself from uh, uh, retyping it? So if I just say paste, right? And then again, if I intentionally make a, a, a basically some sort of syntax error, right? So it says missing parentheses. So yes, the answer is it's, it's quite durable which is very encouraging. And uh, I am uh, happy that this works. Let's do, um, uh, I don't know, I mean, we could have, we, we can try something else, uh, like, uh, for instance, uh, we can try to do something like this. Right now, unary operators are not supported by, by what I've done, right? So this uh, will probably complain that something's missing around the plus sign. So let's see what it says. It says bed input plus. It basically says, oh, I, I just ran into something like plus and I'm not quite sure what you meant by doing this plus and, and so anyway, so there's some, uh, some interesting variety. All right, yes, uh, next, qu next question. Would you be able to explain the tree for that large problem? Because like how come it's seeing the one and the plus in the same thing? Uh, yes, uh, the way we interpret this, right, like we can look at this expression right here. Uh, it, that should be an excellent exercise for us. Let's, uh, let's take a look and uh, be sure that we can interpret everything and uh, agree with it, right? So let's take a look. So the expression that was uh, written the, the following way, 2 plus uh, 5 minus 4, Okay, and then plus, and those kind of silly set of parentheses, and one, just one over here, placed in its own set of parentheses. And the outcome of it, it looks like plus, right? So there's a, there's a plus at the top, a plus at the top, which has its own left-hand side, which is yet another plus. That's the way it looks like, okay? And this plus has two on its left-hand side, right? Has two on its left-hand side. And it has minus on its, on its uh, right-hand side over here. There is minus, okay? Uh, we have uh, five minus four as sides of uh, uh, this minus. Five minus four right here. Right, so that's the way we construct it. And so then finally we have plus one, right? So this one belongs to the level of this plus. And these little dots basically indicate that uh, a single dot corresponds to this plus and the double dot corresponds to this plus with already the one that already has the dot. So, so what do you think? Does this, look, does, does this look, look right? Right? So it's basically, it, it, the parentheses are now gone, right? So, so the parentheses are interpreted and processed, and basically, in the end, they're discarded after being interpreted. We don't want to use parentheses to populate anything inside the tree, because the tree only relies on the right relationship between the pluses and minuses and their left-hand side and right-hand side. Right? So, so I, I guess an interesting observation is that parentheses, are, although they impact the way things are happening as we are trying to do, trying to store the data, right? Because when we interpret this expression, we store the data in this type of tree, right? But besides this challenge of storing the data, uh, we also use parentheses, but 
once we work through the parentheses, we actually discard them. We don't want to make parentheses part of our tree. We only use them as signals to stir in one direction or, or the other when the tree is constructed. Okay, so let's take a look at the code. So now the hard part, I suppose, or maybe an easy part. It depends, right? It depends how, how good the code is. And I think what already is, uh, is happening that we can say quit, kind of nicely end the program, right? So let's go to the project. And uh, let's start with the main, right? So the main, um, the main method uh, sits right here. And uh, what it does... It's using the validator class, which we've used uh, uh, all uh, all along since CIS 157, which has get string, which I simply use like a like a like a uh, you know angle bracket uh, as prompt to the user, uh, and we use the uh, uh, the scanner uh, class to to do the actual uh, dirty work to get. Uh, user input uh, and so as a result I construct string builder uh, from a string entered by the user so basically this is the string which is entered by the user uh, and I use string builder because this is a chance for us to demonstrate the use of string builder and I have my own reasons to do that and I say that my string builder object is input right so in my case this uh, string of characters Right, this uh, entire string of characters uh, initially uh, entered by the user, this, this string of characters, uh, basically gets stored uh, in uh, in the input uh, in the input object, which is the uh, the type of it is string builder. Uh, next, I check whether it's a quit, and if it's a quit, I say goodbye and exit. Uh, otherwise. The following happens. So um, the the you can see that, as in every good program, the main method should be actually very short. Okay, uh, its its intention it it's, it should be very short. Uh, it should essentially highlight the top level things that are happening in the application. In our case, we check for we get user input, we check for quit, and then we use the Lexer class to do all the rest of the work. However, the entire process is organized inside an endless loop so that we go right back to the prompt uh, after either successful or unsuccessful interpretation of this user input as being, you know, a legal or illegal uh, arithmetic expression. So obviously the rest of our conversation is going to be focusing on this. Essentially we say, oh, we're going to construct an instance of the Lexer class and its constructor takes the string builder as its input, right? So we're going to say, all right, Lexer, you will take the input. Apparently you will try to understand the expression. Apparently it already automatically does the printing for apparently debugging purposes right now, which is very invaluable to be able to visualize your data structures is like really paramount to uh, to uh, uh, debug your programs, right? So it's, a, it's an art to be able to visualize parts of what you do. And that's what obviously we're going to need uh, over here to, to do all the testing and validate that we're doing things properly. Right? And so what happens is that we construct the Lexer, which apparently does some minimal work to configure itself. But then we say, uh, Lexer, uh, uh, apparently uh, the uh, arithmetic uh, expressions obey uh, grammar rules for arithmetic expressions. And so we're trying to organize it as a set of rules. And if our expression passes all of the rules uh, successfully, then we have some success uh, to say. Uh, otherwise, uh, we will apparently be printing some error messages, uh, which are apparently are handled directly inside the start rule. So there's, this is something that we can basically close and say, our full attention switches over to the Lexer class. So I'm happy to close the main app and go to the Lexer class. Of course, the Lexer class is, uh, I call it Lexer. In some uh, similar programs, it could be called a parser. But my view of Lexer is that it really kind of deals, majority of the responsibility of the class Lexer is dealing with uh, 
uh, the lexical analysis of input, uh, and uh, you know, normally in 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 the more realistic scenario, I would actually have a parser class which was using the lexer class to do the work analyzing the input. But then I quickly realized that uh, it would just basically start complicating the issues uh, with the demo project. So I decided to start with one single lexer class that does both basically understanding the input and storing it, storing it in a tree. Normally, storage, uh, building this tree would be a responsibility of the parser class. Uh, but uh, uh, many people would uh, uh, could use either name for it. But my primary focus here is that lexical analysis, which is like basically um, understanding individual tokens. That's why I say in the, my top level line here that lexer class parses input tokens and assembles the AST, which is the uh, uh, abstract syntax tree. All right. So uh, let's take a look. This is the constructor. Uh, Lexer takes string builder as a as an input, and what it does instead of storing this input directly, which is not very helpful, it actually uh, it actually internally uses the token stream class. Uh, which uh, creates a stream of these tokens, right? So we talked about the fact that before we jump ahead of ourselves and, and use this, uh, this tree to interpret the results, uh, we need to generate the stream of tokens or tokenize the input and be able to distinguish uh, all punctuation from numbers being used and so forth. Okay, so uh, so the responsibility of the constructor for our Lexer class is to actually construct the token stream. So our attention actually now is shifting to the token stream because first we need to basically become comfortable with the with the ideas handled by the token stream. And if you recall, once the Lexer constructor is done, then it uh, uh, then the main uh, method calls the start rule and the first uh, thing that the start rule does it says let's tokenize the input all right so so let's focus on the constructor of the token stream and also the method tokenize input because these are the the two prominent parts that we need to understand before we can uh, talk about the stream uh, stream of uh, tokens so uh, here's tokenized stream, another class for us to look at. 